Okay. Is Satan Lucifer in Isaiah 14? No. Let's prove it. Isaiah 14, verses 3 to 11. Let's see if the context is about Satan or someone else. Now let's read. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yehovah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. And it shall come to pass in the day that Yehovah shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Pay attention. Verse 4. Who is Isaiah talking about? Verse 4, folks. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Bam. This entire chapter is about the king of Babylon, the human king of Babylon. Pay attention. And say, how hath the oppressor seized, the golden city seized, Yahovah hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Okay, let's read. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee. And the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. No one has come to chop down our trees anymore since the king of Babylon has been destroyed. Watch here. Isaiah 14, 9 to 11. Pay attention. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. When I send you to hell, king of Babylon, it stirs up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones of the kings of the nations. Now notice 10, 11. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? You mighty king of Babylon who wrecked havoc on the earth, you become nothing like us? You're now in hell with us? You're in hell with us? And by the way, this tells you the spirits in hell, Hades, are conscious and alert because they're having conversations when the king of Babylon comes down to join them, right? All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Nothing? Humiliated? Brought to the pit of Hades? Thy pomp, your arrogance, is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Question. From verses 3 to 11, Isaiah is talking about who? Who is he talking about? Who's going to be covered with worms when he's killed, buried, and his soul goes to Hades, to hell, to join the other wicked kings of the nations? Who is he talking about? Isaiah 14, 3 to 11. So everyone saw it's the king of Babylon, right? Let's look at verse 4 one more time. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, how hath the oppressor seized, the golden city seized? So who is it talking about? But everyone saw in Isaiah 14, 4, it's the king of Babylon. You see it? Before I move on to the next part, do you guys see, you sure? So then let's look at verse 11 one more time. Verse 11. In verse 11, verse 11. Who is Isaiah referring to in verse 11? Isaiah 14, 11. Thy pump, your arrogance is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. Who is going to be brought to the grave and whose soul is going to go to Hades to join the other wicked rulers whose soul are now in Hades in torment, waiting judgment? And who will be covered with worms? In verse 11. Okay, you guys see it. It's the king of Babylon, right? King of Babylon? So then now let's look at verse 12. Surprise, surprise. Verse 12. Guys, now you answered it for yourselves. Verse 12. How art that fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Bam! If I just follow the context, who is Lucifer here? If I just follow the context. 3 and 11, and I read 12. 
Who's Lucifer? In the context, it's the king of Babylon. That's number one. Number two, Lucifer is a Latin word. Lucifer is a Latin word. Do you really expect me to believe that God gave Satan a Latin name before Latin was invented? So when God created Satan, he named him Lucifer. That's his name. Because that's what you're saying. You're saying his name is Lucifer. Lucifer comes from the Latin translation of the Old Testament. When the Hebrew Old Testament was translated into Latin, the word Helen was translated as Lucifer. So do you really think that when Satan was created, God called him Lucifer? So where do you get his name is Lucifer? Why don't you say his name is Helel? Because in Hebrew it's Helel ben Shachar. Shining one, son of the morning. Helel ben Shachar. Okay, here, let me show you what the Hebrew is. Let me get you the lexicon. Strong's H, 1966. Helel. Let me hear it again. What's, it, what's his name? Strong's H, 1966. Haleo. Hey, Haleo. Hey, there you go. Haleo. Hey, okay, so why would we say that the name of Satan is Lucifer when Latin didn't exist at the time of Isaiah? It came later on, and Isaiah is written in Hebrew. Why don't you say that Satan is Haleo? Hey, so why don't we have Haleians? Do we have any Haleians? Why is it Lucifer, Luciferian? Hail aliens. Okay. So now let's go back to Isaiah 14, 12 to 15. Why then is this being described as being hurled from heaven? Read with me. How art thou, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? See, it's the same king who weakened the nations. But guys, pay attention. Why is he being thrown from heaven? Pay attention to the sequence. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now do you understand why he's being hurled from heaven? Not because he existed in heaven. Because he's on earth who wants to ascend to heaven to rival God. And God says, when you do that, I'm going to hurl you back to the ground into hell. Okay, did you catch why he's being hurled to the ground? Let's look at Isaiah 14, 12, 15 one more time. It's because in his arrogant heart, he's now going to try to ascend to heaven to rival God. Ascend above the stars, the angels. And God says, when you do that, I'm going to hurl you down to the earth, in fact, to hell itself, because you are no God and you cannot rival me. In other words, this being didn't exist in heaven. He's on earth who wants to ascend to heaven. Do you catch it now? If you read context, do you understand? Read the passages to yourselves. He says in his heart, I'm going to ascend above the stars. I'm going to be like the Most High. I'm going to ascend to God. So this being didn't start off in heaven. He starts off from the earth. And his arrogance wants to now ascend to heaven, rival God, and become greater than the stars. In other words, this is not Satan if you believe Satan's origin is in heaven. If Satan's origin is in heaven from where he fell, then how can you say Lucifer is Satan when Lucifer is on the earth ascending to heaven, and once he ascends, God will then hurl him back to the earth and into hell itself. This being was never in heaven. He's on earth, who in his arrogance says, I'm going to ascend to heaven, become God's rival, higher than the stars, and God says, oh yeah, once you do, I'm going to damn you to hell, I'm going to hurl you to the earth. 
So are you sure this is Satan? Did Satan originate from the earth and ascend to heaven from where he fell? Or is he a heavenly being from where he fell? So if he's a heavenly being, then how can he tell me Lucifer in Isaiah 14 is Satan? This being is on earth. This being is a king, a king of Babylon, a place on earth. In other words, it's a human being who thinks he's a god. Okay, do you understand now that this king is a human king on earth? who wants to send to heaven, and God says, what do you do? I'm going to damn you to hell and hurl you back to the ground and make your gra grave a bed of worms. So what God is saying to the king of Babylon, you think you're a god, and you think you can rival me, but I'm going to kill you dead like the maggot that you are, and when you're burning in Hades, will you still think you're a god after I humiliate you? And bring other nations to destroy you? You catch it now? Do you understand the language is not about a spirit being, but a human being who thinks he's a God on earth, who can rival God? And God is saying, when I kill you dead, and I damn your soul to Hades, along with the other kings of the nations who thought they were gods, and I damn their souls to Hades, will you still think you're a God? You with me there? Now, let me prove to you that the king of Babylon thinks he's a god on earth and he can rival God. Do you remember the Assyrian king? And you got to read this on your own. Read Isaiah's, Isaiah chapter 36, 37. The Assyrian king, my ancestor, Sanchirub, Sennacherib, sent the Rabshakeh to tell Hezekiah, don't trust in the fact that you think your God will deliver you. Did any of the gods of the nations... Save them from the hands of my king. Do you see the arrogance? Rabshakeh is telling Hezekiah, none of the gods of the other nations were able to save them from my king, attacking them, slaughtering them, subjugating them. Neither will your God be able to do so. Do you see the arrogance? The king of Assyria thinks he is powerful enough to defeat the God of Hezekiah. That's Isaiah chapter 36 and 37.